Today we will make this all for free and run locally on your computer. Using stable diffusion, common sense made simple. So here we are in the automatic 1111 web UI. If you're not familiar with it, I've discussed in previous tutorials. And uh, it's a free web browser. It's an alternative to Mid Journey and Deform Notebooks and Colabs, no computing units. It's 100% free, run on your local on your computer. And winter is coming, so it's always great to have your GPU open up. So let's get started right away. Today I'm going to show you how to animate. I know previously I showed you how to simulate video input by using batch to batch image with a PNG sequence, but today we're going to animate this gentleman here, this beautiful hyena. I mean, look at this guy. He needs a hug or something. So anyway, I have used a similar prompt to the video input tutorial I did recently running locally. We're starting in text to image. I recently made a tutorial about text to image specifically just to help you in this instance. I'll post a link in the description and a card will pop up on the upper right corner. And overall, you have your prompt, you have your negative prompt, you have your st steps, everything set, you generated this beautiful hyena hybrid, whatever it is. I mean, he should be on a t-shirt. I mean, he's in my heart, no matter what. But in my heart. We're gonna send it image to image. So now here we are in image to image. And this is where the real magic is about to happen. So as of October 9, 2022, I, I can't find anyone showing how to use this technique. I figured it out myself. And with a lot of my other tutorials, that's the same thing. I, I started making tutorials because I couldn't find the techniques that I was taking so much time to figure out and learn. And I wanted to pass on that creative knowledge to the AI community. And I've been getting so much positive feedback, which motivates me to continue showing you these unique techniques, despite running my own business and working pretty much seven days a week. If you do not make tutorials, you can skip this chapter, but I just wanted to mention because it seems to be happening more and more frequently is other channels are taking these unique techniques and replicating them almost identically, you know, and not making any improvements and making their own tutorials. And I mean, I'm here to spread the creative knowledge is the only reason I'm doing this. But I, I mean, imitation is the sincerest form of flattery I've been told, but a thank you or a mention. I mean, I put a lot of work into this. And, you know, if you're just gonna take it, imitate it, just say thank, thank you. you. That's all I ask. I don't want your money or, or sponsors or part of your monetization from YouTube. But I mean, we should all be working together in this community with the knowledge should be shared to everyone. I mean, we could, if we all work together, it would only enhance the experience. And I know you're not violating any rules or anything. I mean, it's just the way it is. But I mean, anyway, I just felt this need to be said. Don't take it personal, anyone. I mean, just be original. And if you can't be original, just give credit where to do. Let's get back into it. So here we are in the image to image. I know this, this hyena, back when I lived in South Africa, I had a pet hyena and he reminds me of him. His name was George. Hi, George. So this is the secret of it all to, to finally crack how to animate locally using the automatic web UI. And if you go down the scripts, there is animator which I will post a link in the description on uh, how to get this. It's 100% free. But how it works is it simulates the same effect as like a deform notebook in that sense. So we have our thing here, our generation. And first up, you can pick if you also want to generate, you know, one of these with your PNG sequence, but you need an FFmpeg installed. So if you don't have that, I will also post a link in the description showing how to do that. So when you do have your PNG sequence, you will also have one of these formats you can take on. So you can first pick the total animation length. It comes 10 seconds, frame rate 15. I'm just going to leave everything for now. Denoising strength, see now it overrides the original strength here. So now you'll only be using this. We'll leave it at the default for now, but sometimes I go like 0.48. That was my deform setting. It was like decay half life is experimental, and they even say, like, not really to use it. They say, uh, 
you know, it, its value is halved every second. So, I mean, if you want to play with that, play with that. I don't use it. Add noise is similar to the before a notebook. It just adds some grain or noise. You know, we don't need that right now. I do that in post usually. Now, zoom one and zero for no movement. Same with X and Y. X would be left and right. Y would be up and down, both zero. Now, say you set it to two. That means every second it will double in size. So I usually go like 1.3, 1.6 in between there, but I also usually slow things down in post too. But we'll just say 1.3 for this example. For Y, positive is down and negative numbers go up. And that's how many pixels it'll move per second. With X, positive moves right, negative moves left that many pixels per second. But I'm not gonna change that for right now. Maybe we'll just put 10, just for fun. fun. <laughs> and now we see a positive prompts and negative prompts again here. So this has to do with your little keyframe format here. Now, for example, this is the standard one that gave us a default with the script. So if you say you have a nice apple sitting in a fruit bowl, etc., etc. Et it will always add beautiful 4K as a positive, and it'll always use these as a negative in every single one. So you say you have 20 prompts, you want to keep retyping the same word. So it's it's a nice little shortcut. But you see how this works? They give you a little yeah, chart cool. here. So that would be zero. So at zero seconds, it'll be at 0.4 de des noise. I I guess they ain't so good on that there. But I don't reckon. And then we got the zoom will start at 2.5, and then you see next would be the X shift zero, Y shift would be zero, and the positive prompt. And if you're gonna add a negative prompt, we'll go right in there, squeeze it in there, squeeze it in, squeeze it in. So yeah, and then of course, see that, so in five seconds, it'll turn to that, blah, blah, blah. For this instance, I'm just showing you an example. I'm not gonna use any of this stuff. So we have this beautiful creature. I'm not gonna get into him again. And oh, I do just want to just give him a hug. You're weird. But then yeah, you pretty much you generate and I'm gonna watch this live with you in the time lapse and we'll come back when this is done. Just wanna take this time to thank all my members and thank all my supporters. Thank you so much for all the positive feedbacks and for all the, the copycats out there doing the same thing. Hey, just say thank you. That's all I ask. I'll say it again, just say thanks. And if you notice any color, weird color saturation issues with the, between frame to frame, you go into the settings and then you notice this setting, you need to have this on because it's based on your original image, otherwise it just starts getting chaotic. I'll leave a link in the description, the screenshot for my uh, all my settings if you're interested in looking at them. Now also everything should have went to whatever your designated save folder is and you see you have a PNG sequence and say you wanna, if you have your FFmpeg installed, you could say, Double tick on that and then see, it creates an MP3 that's playing on my other monitor so you can't see it. You big dummy. But, you know, so if you just want the video and you don't want to have to do all the editing and this and that. In another instance, say your computer crashes. This technique would be similar to like resume animation in a deform notebook. To resume the animation in this, you would just take the last frame of your animation, drag it into here, and just rerun the animation for however long, and it'll just continue from there. And the same settings they used before. So that's pretty much it. I mean, tag me. I'd love to see what you're doing with these techniques, and I feel this is great. Running locally, you don't have to pay any extra money to big corporations or whoever, or you could do a lot more experimenting, you know, not have to worry about it costing money and for independent artists, you know, it's great. You know, we really love this technology and being able to run locally definitely helps. So that's about it. You know, leave any questions, just leave in the comments, you know, and I uh, hope this worked out for you and have a great day. Mm.